day and God bless you. Welcome to the Bible reading in chronological order. I just want to thank you once again for joining and participating in this venture with us. And I pray that the reading today would be a blessing to you. And I pray that the Lord would just speak to us through His Word today. Today we're busy in the book of Leviticus. And we're going to concentrate on chapters 11, 12, and 13. Now just so we know, chapters 11 through to 15 deal with ritual purity. And so when we're looking at it, I don't want us to get lost in just what's being, uh, or what, what we're reading in terms of what needs to be eaten, the, the, the rituals uh, after childbirth, the rituals for the lepers. I want us to really think about it in a spiritual aspect and try to connect the dots in uh, the typology of all of this. So let's look at it quickly. We see in chapter 11 uh, that the Lord is giving uh, instructions of what can be eaten, what can't be eaten. Now, this is very important. First of all, God wanted a people that was distinctive, separated from the other nations. And he gave three main ordinances to separate the people. The first was the food laws. He told them that they could eat only kosher food, uh, that meaning, you know, the clean animals, uh, they weren't allowed to eat things that were that were marked unclean. So he would have the the dividing of the hoof, the chewing of the cud. Uh, now many people have many theories around what that is. I'm not going to get into that so much, but I want to look at the eating as a whole. And then you had uh, the feast laws, which uh, separated the people of Israel from the other nations where they had to keep specific feasts unto the Lord. And then you had uh, the circumcision law. Now, if you're looking at it in terms of uh, the spiritual or the typology, we see that the Lord wants us to be circumcised in the heart, it talks about in the New Testament. So that is the cutting off of the flesh. Then in the way we eat, what we eat, the word, to digest the word, the pure word of God, eat the true word of God, not to, not to mix it and mingle it with unclean things, but to eat the true clean word of God. And then uh, to have the feasts, and the feasts then talk about the covenants that the Lord had made with these people, or the covenant that the Lord had made with these people, and He fulfilling that covenant through those feasts. When we get to the feast, we're going to see how interesting that is. That is so beautiful. But God wanted to himself a separated nation. And for us as Christians as well in the spiritual, we must be a separated people. So we see that we go through these laws of the animals that can be uh, eaten and not, uh, not eaten. We see that uh, the animals that could be eaten were all herbivores here in this instance, except for the fish. When it comes to fish, fish eat other fish, so we see that that is uh, the one carnivorous animal. But there was also these laws given for health reasons as well. Now, when we're looking at it in a spiritual, again, there is health reasons. If we eat the Word of God mingled with other things and uh, ideologies and, and traditions of men and all of these things, it will do bad for our health. So the Lord gave them these things for health reasons, but also now in a spiritual sense, it is for our good health. Then we see in chapter 12, let's go to chapter 12, and this deals with the offering and the purifying of a lady who has given birth. Now, this is interesting. Go through it, understand it, try to pull in the, the, the types into the spiritual as well and see how beautiful that is. Then we're looking at chapter 13, but I'm not go. Uh, I know we're not reading chapter 14 today, but I'm dealing with chapter 13 and 14 as a whole, because it's dealing with the laws of the leper. Now uh, these discuss the the case and not the cure of the leper. The idea of separation is to contain the spreading of the disease, and then to celebrate when the person is cured of this disease. Now, leprosy relates to sin. As the leper used to cry out, unclean, unclean, as he walked along, and be apart from the people, so we have to realize the filthiness of sin 
and the need for the cleansing. As a leper is sad and restless and there is an absence of pain, so too when we sin there is a restlessness and a craving for satisfaction and our conscience is seared. Now the priest would separate a leper for seven days and check the flesh again to see uh, if the person had been healed once once he claimed to have been healed from the leprosy. So in, in much the same way, we must not judge others in haste. The Word of God gives us the way we need to try and help anyone who has fallen into sin. Now I want to jump ahead a little bit uh, and we're going to get to the story of Naaman, but I just want to speak about it quickly. Uh, Naaman had a spiritual cure for the leprosy that he had by dipping himself in the Jordan River. And this is the same Jordan River that Jesus was later going to be baptized in. And so too we need to be identified with Christ with his death, burial and resurrection. Amazing, Naaman was not a Jew, Naaman was a Gentile, but still he was told to dip himself into the Jordan seven times. We see that the we see how it represents then what the priests had to do, but we see then that Jesus Christ would be baptized then into that in, in into that same Jordan River. So look at it in this light. It's beautiful. It's a wonderful uh, passage of scripture. Even though we're looking at it and we're saying, well, a lot of these rules don't apply to us. Well, they do. They just apply to us in a very spiritual sense, not in the physical anymore. So I pray that the reading today would be a blessing to you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you. May He give you peace. God bless. Chapter 11 And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever parteth the hoof, and is cloven-footed, and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the hoof, as the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. And the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. And the hare, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. And the swine, though he divide the hoof, and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. They shall be even an abomination unto you. He shall not eat of their flesh, but he shall have their carcasses in abomination. Whatsoever hath no fins nor scales in the waters, that shall be an abomination unto you. And these are they that she shall have an abomination among the fowl. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle, and the ossifrage, and the osprey, and the vulture, and the kite after his kind. Every raven after his kind. And the owl, and the night hawk, and the cocko, and the hawk after his kind, and the little owl, and the cormorant, and the grey owl, and the swan, and the pelican, and the jeer eagle, and the stork, the heron after her kind, and the lapwing, and the bat. All fowls that creep, going upon all four, shall be an abomination of them. Yet these may ye eat of every fine creeping thing that goeth upon all four, which have legs above their feet, to leap withal upon the earth. Even these of them ye may eat, the locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. But all other flying creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you, and for these he shall be unclean. Whosoever toucheth the carcass of them shall be unclean until he eat them. And whosoever beareth aught of the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until he eat them. The carcasses of every beast which divideth the hoof and is not cloven footed nor cheweth the cud are unclean unto you. Every one that toucheth them should be unclean. And whatsoever goeth upon his paws among all manner of beasts that go on all four, those are unclean.
unclean unto. And so toucheth their carcass shall be unclean until the evening. And he that beareth the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. They are unclean unto. These also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth, the weasel and the mouse and the tortoise after his kind, and the ferret and the chameleon and the lizard and the snail and the mole. These are unclean to you among all the creep. Whosoever doth touch them, when they be dead, shall be unclean until the evening. And upon whatsoever any of them, when they are dead, doth fall, it shall be unclean, whether it be any vessel of wood, or raiment, or skin, or sack, whatsoever vessel it be, wherein any work is done, it must be put into water, and it shall be unclean until the even. So it shall be cleansed. And every earthen vessel, wherein to any of the fallen, whatsoever is in it, shall be unclean, and ye shall break it. Of all meat which may be eaten, that on which such water cometh shall be unclean, and all drink that may be drunk in every such vessel shall be unclean. And everything whereupon any part of their carcass falleth shall be unclean, whether it be oven or ranges for pots, they shall be broken up, for they are unclean, and shall be unclean unto them. Nevertheless, a fountain or pit, wherein there is plenty of water, shall be clean, but that which toucheth their carcass shall be unclean. And if any part of their carcass fall upon any sowing seed which is to be sown, it shall be clean. But if any water be put upon the seed, and any part of their carcass fall thereon, it shall be unclean unto you. And if any beast of which ye may eat die, he that toucheth the carcass thereof shall be unclean until the evening. And he that eateth of the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. He also that beareth the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. And every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth shall be an abomination. It shall not be eaten. Whatsoever goeth upon the belly, and whatsoever goeth upon all four, or whatsoever hath more feet among all creeping things that creep upon the earth, then ye shall not eat, for they are an abomination. Ye shall not make yourselves abominable with any creeping thing that creepeth, neither shall ye make yourselves unclean with them, that ye should be defiled thereby. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy. For I am holy. Neither shall ye defy yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy. For I am holy. This is the law of the beasts, and of the fowl, and of every living creature that moveth in the waters, and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth, to make a difference between the unclean and the clean, and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. Chapter 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman hath conceived seed and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days. According to the days of the separation for her infirmity, shall she be unclean. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. She shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. She shall touch no hallowed thing, nor come into the sanctuary, until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. But if she bear a maid child, then she shall be unclean two weeks, as in her separation. And she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score and six days. And when the days of her purifying are fulfilled, for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation unto the priest, who shall offer it before the Lord and make an atonement for her. She shall be cleansed from the issue of her blood. This is the law for her that hath borne a male or a female. And if she be not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtles or two young pigeons, the one for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for her, and she shall be clean. Chapter 13 And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man shall have in the skin of his flesh a rising, a scab, or bright spot, and it be in the skin of his flesh like a plague of leprosy, then he shall be brought unto Aaron the priest, or unto one of his sons the priests. And the priest shall look on the plague in the skin of the flesh. And when the hair in the plague is turned white, and the plague in sight be deeper than the skin of his flesh, it is a plague of leprosy. And the priest shall look on him, 
and pronounce him unclean. If the bright spot be white in the skin of his flesh, and his sight be not deeper than the skin, and the hair thereof be not turned white, then the priest shall shut up him that hath the plague seven days. And the priest shall look on him the seventh day, and behold, if the plague in his sight be at a stay, and the plague spread not in the skin, then the priest shall shut him up seven days more. And the priest shall look on him again the seventh day. And behold, if the plague be somewhat dark, and the plague spread not in the skin, the priest shall pronounce him clean. It is but a scab, and he shall wash his clothes and be clean. But if the scab spread much abroad in the skin, after that he hath been seen of the priest for his cleansing, he shall be seen of the priest again. And if the priest see that, behold, the scab spreadeth in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a leprosy. When the plague of leprosy is in a man, then he shall be brought unto the priest, and the priest shall see him. And behold, if the rising be white in the skin, and it have turned the hair white, and there be quick raw flesh in the rising, it is an old leprosy in the skin of his flesh, and the priest shall pronounce him unclean, and shall not shut him up, for he is unclean. And if a leprosy break out abroad in the skin, and the leprosy cover all the skin of him that hath the plague, from his head even to his foot, wheresoever the priest looketh, then the priest shall consider, and behold, if a leprosy have covered all his flesh, he shall pronounce him clean that hath the plague. It is all turned white. He is clean. But when raw flesh appeareth in him, he shall be unclean. And the priest shall see the raw flesh and pronounce it to be unclean. For the raw flesh is unclean. It is a leprosy. Or if the raw flesh turn again and be changed unto white, he shall come unto the priest. And the priest shall see him. And behold, if the plague be turned into white, then the priest shall pronounce him clean that hath the plague. He is clean. The flesh also in which even in the skin thereof was a boil and is healed. And in the place of the boil there be a white rising, or a bright spot, white and somewhat reddish, and it be shown to the priest. And if when the priest seeth that behold be in sight lower than the skin, and the hair thereof be turned white, the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a plague of leprosy broken out of the boil. But if the priest look on it, and behold there be no white hairs therein, and if it be not lower than the skin, but be somewhat dark, then the priest shall shut him up seven days. And if it spread much abroad in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a plague. But if the bright spot stay in his place and spread not, it is a burn and boil, and the priest shall pronounce him clean. Or if there be any flesh in the skin whereof there is a hot burning, and the quick flesh that burneth have a white bright spot, somewhat reddish or white, then the priest shall look upon it, and behold, if the hair in the bright spot be burned white, and it be in sight deeper than the skin, it is a leprosy broken out of burning, wherefore the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is the plague of leprosy. But if the priest look on it, and behold, there be no white hair and bright spot, and it be no lower than the other skin, but be somewhat dark, then the priest shall shut him up seven days. And the priest shall look upon him the seventh day, and if it be spread much abroad in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is the plague of leprosy. And if the bright spot stay in his place, and spread not in the skin, but it be somewhat dark, it is a rising of the burning, and the priest shall pronounce it clean, for it is an inflammation of the burning. If a man or woman have a plague upon the head or the beard, then the priest shall see the plague. Behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow, thin hair, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a dry score, even a leprosy upon the head or beard. And if the priest look on the plague of the spore, and behold, it be not in sight deeper than the skin, and that there is no black hair in it, then the priest shall shut up him that hath the plague of the skull seven days. And in the seventh day, the priest shall look on the plague, and behold, if the skull spread not, and there be in it no yellow hair, and the skull be not in sight deeper than the skin, he shall be shaven. But the skull shall he not shave. And the priest shall shut up him that hath the skull seven days more. And in the seventh day the priest shall look on the skull, and behold, if the skull be not spread in the skin, nor be in sight deeper than the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him clean, and he shall wash his clothes and be clean. But if the skull spread much in the skin after his cleansing, then the priest shall look on him, and behold, if the skull be spread in the skin, the priest shall not seek the yellow hair. He is unclean. But if the skull be in the sight at a stay, and that there is black hair grown up therein, the skull is healed, he is clean, and the priest shall pronounce him clean.
If a man also or a woman have in the skin of their flesh bright spots, even white bright spots, then the priest shall look, and behold, if the bright spots in the skin of their flesh be darkish white, it is a freckled spot that groweth in the skin, he is clean. And the man whose hair is fallen off his head, he is bald, yet is he clean. And he that hath his hair fallen off from the part of his head toward his face, he is forehead bald, yet is he clean. And if there be in the bald head or bald forehead a white reddish sore, it is a leprosy sprung up in his bald head or his bald forehead. Then the priest shall look upon it, and behold, if the rising of the sore be white reddish in his bald head or in his bald forehead, as the leprosy appeared in the skin of the flesh, he is a leprous man, he is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean, his plague is in his head. And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent, and his head bare, and he shall put a covering upon his upper lip, and shall cry, unclean, unclean. All the days wherein the plague shall be in him, he shall be defiled. He is unclean, he shall dwell alone. Without the camp shall his habitation be. The garment also that the plague of leprosy is in, whether it be a woolen garment or a linen garment, whether it be in a warp or woof of linen or of woolen, whether in a skin or in anything made of skin, and if the plague be greenish or reddish in the garment or in the skin, either in the warp or in the woof or in anything of skin, it is a plague of leprosy, and shall be showed unto the priest. And the priest shall look upon the plague, and shut up it that hath the plague seven days. And he shall look on the plague on the seventh day. If the plague be spread in the garment, either in the warp or in the woof, or in the skin, or in any work that is made of skin, the plague is a fretting leprosy, it is unclean. He shall therefore burn that garment, whether warp or woof, in woolen or in linen, or anything of skin, wherein the plague is, for it is a fretting leprosy, it shall be burnt in the fire. And if the priest shall look and behold the plague be not spread in the garment, either in the warp or in the woof, or in anything of skin, then the priest shall command that they wash the thing wherein the plague is, and he shall shut it up seven days more. And the priest shall look on the plague after that it is washed, and behold, if the plague have not changed its color, and the plague be not spread, it is unclean. Thou shalt burn it in the fire. It is fret inward, whether it be bare within or without. And if the priest look, and behold the plague be somewhat dark after the washing of it, then he shall rend it out of the garment, or out of the skin, or out of the warp, or out of the woof. And if it appear still in the garment, either in the warp, or in the woof, or in anything of skin, it is a spreading plague. Thou shalt burn that wherein the plague is with fire. And the garment, either warp, or woof, or whatsoever thing of skin be, which thou shalt wash, if the plague be departed from them, then it shall be washed the second time, and shall be clean. This is the law of the plague of leprosy, in a garment of woolen or linen, either in the warp or woof, or anything of skins, to pronounce it clean or to pronounce it unclean.